no idea that I would ever, ever publish anything. And then a lot of people started coming to the swamp, pick my brain as to why I'd want to live that way. And magazines, uh, television shows, whatnot. And so a writer for a, a magazine called Big River. Big River covers the Mississippi from the Twin Cities to the Quad Cities. Her name was Pam Iden, and she did a story about me living there in the swamp. And then afterwards, she said, would you have any interest in writing a column for our magazine each month, uh, a phonology about what's going on along the river? I said I would, and I did. And I found that I really enjoyed doing that. And so I wrote for five years for Big River. So I wrote 60 columns for them. A fellow came from uh, Field and Stream magazine. His name is J. Scott Besto. I think he still writes for them. He wrote an article for Wisconsin Trails magazine. By then I, w I had come out of the swamp periodically to, to do nature talks, storytelling, and so forth. An old game warden uh, came one day and he, he said, uh, I'm supposed to do a nature talk at Wabasha, Minnesota for some teachers who are having a workshop on the river. I can't make it. Uh, he says, I wonder if you could. You could have knocked me over with a feather. I said, I should go. I never liked school. Never like school teachers. I'm going to be surrounded by 55 of them. What am I going to do there? He said, uh, you know, you are one of the most selfish, greedy people I ever met in my life. He said, you sit back here and all you do is take, take, take from nature. He said, why don't you go and share something for a change? And he said, it might do you some good, they might enjoy it. And not only that, you get $25 and a free meal. I said, I'll go. So I went for all the wrong reasons. I uh, got up, told some stories to my surprise. Afterwards, some of the teachers came and invited me to their schools to do the same for their students. I said I would, and I did, and I, I found out that I enjoyed that as well. When I would read, I tried to read um, as varied uh, books as I could. Because I, by then I had gotten to know some professors and some doctors, lawyers, so forth, so-called professional people. I found out that some of those folks, although I envied their, their high education, had developed tunnel vision, so to speak, where they knew everything about something. And I wanted to know something about everything. And so uh, I read things like Shakespeare and, and uh, John Muir, all the Leopold. I mean, I mi mixed it up as much as I could. I have been left in the digital dust uh, on purpose because not all the old ways are the best. Not all the new ways are the best. You need to pick and choose from both and make a better life. So when I began to write for publishing purposes, <clears throat> my wife said, you can't do this. You know, publishers don't like, this is my high tech right here. Here's a pen and a, a pad of paper. So I have been writing in longhand all the books, all five of these books and parts of these two, and, uh, and I'll continue to do that as long as they'll have me. The, the publishers, of course, this is cost them because they have to have somebody transcribe uh, this writing onto a disc or whatever. But so far, they've been real, real kind and good about it.
the editors in general, I guess I've had about, let's see, four different editors. And they've, they've been very kind, very good. They haven't just, you know, torn things to pieces to where I didn't even recognize what was left. See, I send it to them, they transcribe it, then they edit it, and they send me a copy. And then I, whatever I go along with as far as changes, or I might make some on my own, and I gotta send it back again to them. And they go over that again and send me a, another. I mean, it's just a continuous back and forth, and, which is good, I mean, but it's, it's time consuming, that's for sure. My favorite way of communicating is storytelling, not writing. So I'm a verbal communicator more than anything, okay? But if you don't write that stuff down, it's going to be gone. Uh, books are the um, vehicle through which history presents itself. The hardest thing is getting started. The first few sentences for me. A lot of the times I've started a, a story or a chapter ten different times. I mean, <laughs> it's just, just I crumple it up, start again. But you'll know then when it's right. Another thing too uh, that I like to do is, is write something, and then set it aside, and come back to it in a, oh, a month maybe. See what it reads like then. Sometimes it ain't very good, and sometimes yeah, that's good. Give it a little time. So, uh, if I had one, one advice for young people or anybody, anybody who wants to write, you got to write. It ain't going to happen if you don't write. And everybody has a story to tell um, of some sort. And, it might not seem interesting to, to the person themselves, but it will be, it can be, and it is to somebody.